Thank you so much for joining me for the Weekend Word. I'm David Ford, and yesterday we celebrated Good Friday. Tomorrow we celebrate Resurrection Sunday. But today we're going to learn about Silent Saturday. What do you do when you feel like you can't hear God? Don't change that channel. I'll never forget when I graduated high school. I got in my car and I drove 18 hours I-10 West. I passed up Laplace, I passed up Baton Rouge. I went all the way 18 hours until I hit El Paso, Texas. I made one left turn and I got to Juarez, Mexico, the most dangerous city in the world. I started serving the kids there as a missionary. I cooked, I cleaned, I didn't get paid anything for it. I just thought you go and you do what God tells you to do and he'll take care of you. I stayed there five years until I was dead broke. I had no more money to give. I had a brand new car though and I thought I could sell this car and get out of debt. And so I put a for sale sign on my car. Now I owed $5,300 in debt on a Southwest credit card. Now don't get me wrong, I love flying for free, but I did not love paying the interest on 5,300 every month. So I really was praying that God would help me get out of debt. And I was praying and praying, and after one week of my car being for sale in El Paso, I go back to check on my car and some guys keyed up the entire car. Now y'all, I was devastated. I, th I was thinking, how is this car ever going to sell? And then a few months later, it was my birthday, and I got $100 in the mail. And I thought I could get some new shoes, some new clothes, or I'll make an investment. I'll get my car detailed. I brought my car to the detail shop. I give them all of my birthday money, and they clean my car, and it's spotless. I got the for sale signs in the windows, and I'm thinking the first person that sees this car is going to want to buy it. As I was leaving, El Paso has a lot of sand and they had a sandstorm. I was thinking this can't be good for a car that just got detailed. Then it started raining really hard and I was thinking, I just detailed this car, this can't be good. Then El Paso, Texas had the biggest hailstorm in its history and it dented up my car from the hood to the bumper. I was like, this can't be good for a car that just got detailed. I was devastated. My car was keyed up and now it was dented up. A few months later, it was Christmas vacation. I had a week to visit my family in New Orleans. I get in the car, I'm driving 18 hours, I-10 East. It's 12 o'clock at night. I'm going 80 miles per hour. That was the speed limit, don't judge me. And a big deer jumps in the road and hits my car. I do two 360s and I slam into the cement wall that separates the other side of the I-10. I get outside of the car, I check on it, and it was completely total, the whole right side, no rear view mirrors, no lights, nothing. The only thing I could think was, this can't be good for a car that just got detailed. I was devastated. My car was keyed up, dented up, and now it was total. I didn't even have enough money for a hotel room. I slept in my car in the woods in a keyed up, dented up, totaled car. And I was crying myself to sleep. I said, God, where are you? Do you even exist? I'll never forget what God told me. It was the loudest thing I ever heard him say in my life, the clearest thing. He said, I am never late, I am never early, I am always on time. I woke up scared to death, thought I was gonna get kidnapped sleeping in the woods. I look at my phone, I got a text message how much you want for that car. Now remember, I owed 5,300 and I was praying that God would help me get out of debt. I said, my car? I don't even know, man. It's keyed up, dented up in total. Best offer. He texts me back, I'll give you 5,600 right now for your car. I sold him the car, he gave me the 5,600, I paid off my debt. I had 300, enough to the penny to give me a plane ride back to Mexico. I get back to Mexico, no money, no car, no debt. I was back at zero. But I started praying every day that God would provide a car. 
I said, God, just provide a reliable car to help me help out the kids in Mexico. And I prayed every day for seven months. And finally, I was at a used car lot looking at used cars. And my phone rang, I pick it up, I answer it. It was a guy I shared my faith with a year earlier. We exchanged numbers and I hadn't heard from him since. He says, what are you doing? I said, nothing much, it's my day off. He said, you hungry? I said, man, I'm always hungry. If you're treating, I'm eating. If it's free, it's for me. He said, well, I wanna take you to the Olive Garden. Well, as you remember last week, I told you I grew up in government housing. We grew up in very poor conditions. I had never been to restaurants before up to that point in my life. So the Olive Garden was the nicest restaurant I'd ever been to. They come around with soups and salads and somebody comes with the cheese. And I'm thinking, this is awesome. And he says, I brought you here for something else. I said, what could you have brought me here for? I haven't spoke to you in a year. He said, yesterday my wife was praying and God stopped her and said, give your car to David Ford. He took out his keys and he slid them across the table and said, God told me to give you my car. I start bawling, crying in the restaurant. The waiter was like, what's wrong with the soup? I was like, nothing. My friend's like, what's wrong? I said, nothing. God is never late. God is never early. God is always on time. And I told him the story I just told you. Maybe you find yourself like me, like I was that day in the woods, asking God, where are you? Do you even exist? I feel so alone. Maybe you find yourself in this place right now, wherever you're watching me. I want you to know you are not alone. I have been lonely many times in my life, but I have never been alone. The Bible says God will never leave you nor forsake you. So even when you don't feel him, even when you cannot hear him, he is there. Don't ever confuse his silence for his absence. Let me say that one more time. Don't ever confuse his silence for his absence. God is an intentional God. When he is saying something, he is saying something. And when he is not saying something, he's not saying something intentionally. So when God is doing something, he's doing something. And when God is not doing something, he's not doing something intentionally. God is an intentional God. So yesterday we celebrated Good Friday. Why do we call it good? It was so bad for Jesus. He was beaten, scourged, whipped, and crucified. It was bad for him, it was good for us because by his stripes we are healed and because of his shed blood we are forgiven. Tomorrow we celebrate the resurrection. But what do you do in the in-between? What do you do in the moments when God is saying nothing? I wanna encourage you today. Just because God is not talking to you about your problem does not mean God has not worked out your solution. See, because God was up to something. It's in those in-between moments. It's in those silent Saturday moments when God's already done something and he's going to do something, but you're in the middle. I want you to know in that place, you are not alone. First Kings chapter 19, Elijah encountered God, but God was not in the wind. God was not in the earthquake and God was not in the fire. The Bible says in 1 Kings 19 that God was in the gentle whisper. My niece, Addie, is seven years old. She just got baptized and I'm so proud of her. But my niece, Addie, when she talks, she talks so quiet. It's like, is there a mosquito? What, what's going on? You have to lean in to hear what Addie is trying to say. In the moment of me trying to hear what my niece is trying to tell me, God gave me a revelation that I want to share with you right now. You have to turn down the world's volume to hear the Father's voice. If you want to hear God speak, you have to lean in and be close so you can hear the still, small whisper. Let me illustrate this for you a little bit better. Watch this illustration. 
All right, so this is Josue. Josue is my friend. He's a pastor and he's the man behind all of these videos. Josue represents you. I am facing his back in this moment. If Josue goes throughout his day and I don't say a word, it would be easy for him to feel like I'm not talking. It would be easy for him to feel like I am far away. But look, I am always in reach. I don't even have to stretch my hands out all the way. I am always with him. So it's not a lack of my nearness. It's a lack of his awareness. And a lot of times in our lives, we have our back turned towards God. And we say, God, you're not here. I can't hear you. Where are you? It's not a lack of his nearness because he is always with you. It's a lack of your awareness. Thanks, bro. And so I want you to know that God is with you today. Wherever you are watching me right now, this is a sign he is with you. Even when you can't feel him, even when you can't hear him, it's not a lack of his nearness. Maybe it's a lack of our awareness. Don't ever confuse God's silence for his absence. As we look throughout the scripture, from Old Testament to New Testament, there was 400 years of silence. And the book of Revelation, there was 30 minutes of silence. The Syrophoenician women in Matthew chapter 15 traveled so far to get to Jesus, only to be greeted with the silence of Jesus. Does your faith, can it endure the silence of God? What do you do on the silent Saturday in between Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday? Don't give up. He is with you even now in this very moment. He is never late, never early. He is always on time. You know, I'm reminded in school, the teacher is typically quiet when a student is taking the test. And if you feel the silence of God in your life right now, it may just mean you're in the middle of a test and I know you're going to pass it because God is with you. So wherever you're watching me now, I wanna pray for two groups of people. The first group are for those watching and you feel all alone. You feel you are in a dark room I want to encourage you to get up and start walking towards the light. God is with you in your house right now. And the second group I want to pray for are those who don't have a relationship with Jesus. If you're watching this message and you say, Pastor David, this is for me. I feel so alone. My husband left me. My wife is no longer here. My children have been disrespectful. I can't pay the bills. I've been asking God for a child. I feel so far from him. I can't hear him. It feels like a silent Saturday. I've been in this moment for so long. I want to pray for you. Would you place your hand over your heart? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for every single person watching this message. You are a very present help in time of need. They've been looking for a sign. They've been asking you for a sign. And may this be it. This moment. May they know that you are with them. They are not alone. You have never left them nor forsaken them. Thank you that you are with them now. Just put your loving arms around them and embrace them. Encourage them. Man of God, woman of God, I say rise up in this moment. You are not alone. You are more than a conqueror. You are blessed. You are not forsaken. He is with you now in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. For the second group of people, those who don't have a relationship with Jesus, the truth is you are facing the issues of life and the struggles of life and the test of life by yourself. Because if you don't know Jesus, 
You're having to fight battles alone. But the Bible says, if God is for you, who can be against you? The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. The Bible says in the book of Romans, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. It's a simple prayer. I want you to pray with me right now. I want you to say it out loud and mean it with all your heart. Would you just say these words? Say, dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. Change my life. I believe that you are Lord. I repent and I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, the Bible says all of heaven is celebrating. Maybe you have never been celebrated in your life. Well, guess what? Heaven knows your name and you are being celebrated right now. Congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And I can't wait to see you all next week. We're celebrating one year of the weekend word. Thank you so much for making it possible. Thank you so much for giving. Thank you so much for praying. Because of your generosity, over 200,000 households have heard the good news about Jesus. Thank you so much. I can't wait to see what God is going to do this next year. I'm so excited to celebrate one year. I'm thankful for Josue. I'm thankful for all of you for making it possible. But it wasn't always easy. You just heard a message about Silent Saturday. What happens in between Good Friday and Resurrection Sunday? There's Silent Saturday. What do you do in those moments when God did it before? You know he'll do it again, but you're stuck in the middle. You're in a moment where you're trusting God to come through. We've trusted God and we've just celebrated one year. But I wanna give you some next steps because this weekend we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. We already celebrated Good Friday. Today, we're on Holy Saturday, Silent Saturday, and tomorrow, the resurrection of Jesus. But I got good news for you. You don't have to wait for Sunday to experience a resurrection in your own life. By the end of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to respond, to admit, to believe and to confess, as easy as ABC, that Jesus is Lord. And if there's a situation in your life that is dead, maybe in your marriage, maybe in your finances, maybe in your job or in your parenting, you feel like there's no hope for, I got great news for you. If God can raise Jesus from the dead, there is nothing that is impossible for our God. See, Friday was dark. Saturday was silent, but Sunday changed everything to show us that the worst thing doesn't have to be the last thing that happens in our lives. One thing about Holy Saturday, one thing about silent Saturday is that the silence of God does not mean the absence of God. Even when he's not saying something, he's still saying something. Just because God isn't talking to you about your problem doesn't mean he hasn't already worked out your answer. You see, when Buddha died, he stayed dead. When Gandhi died, he stayed dead. When Muhammad died, he stayed dead. When Joseph Smith died, he stayed dead. When Confucius died, he stayed dead. But when Jesus died, he rose again. And Jesus is the only one still speaking after he Die. The question is, are you listening? No matter how bad your day is, no matter how bad your life is, if you put it in his hands, he could turn it around and even take a bad Friday and make it to a good Friday. And you can experience a resurrection in your life today. You see, the death of Jesus was proof that he was human, but the resurrection was proof that he was God. I love the quote by Ralph Douglas West. He says it this way, the biggest mistake made up at Calvary was they put a nail in the hands 
of a carpenter. I love that. They put nails in the hands of a carpenter. See, with the nails in his hands, Jesus built a coffin to bury our sin. With the nails in his hands, Jesus built a bridge from earth to heaven. With the nails in his hands, Jesus built a ladder from us to God. And that's how you take it a bad day and you make it a good Friday. That's the ultimate checkmate. You see, the world said that Jesus was finished, but Jesus said it was finished. His death certificate meant our birth certificate. And Friday is good because Sunday is coming. So I just wanna encourage you and let you know, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, God is with you. He proved that for you by sending Jesus to take our place on the cross. And you don't have to wait for Sunday to experience your resurrection. There was a man who fell in a pit one day and he couldn't get himself out. A subjective person came along and said, I feel for you down there. An objective person came along and said, it's only logical that you would be there. A scientist came along and said, you only think that's a pit. A Pharisee came along and said, only bad people fall into pits like that. A math teacher came along with a calculator and started calculating how deep the pit was. A news report reporter came and said, can I write a report? Can I interview you about your pit? City inspector asked, do you have a permit for that pit? Tax man asked, did you pay taxes for that pit you're living in? An optimist said, things could get worse. A pessimist said, things will get worse. Confucius said, if you had just listened to me, you would not be in that pit. Buddha said, your pit is only a state of your mind. Muhammad said, if you had done enough good deeds and works, you would not be in that pit. But Jesus, when he saw me in that pit, and he saw you in the pit of life, he didn't say a word, he got in the pit with us. And when Jesus got in that pit, the man looked at Jesus and said, why would you get in this pit with me? And listen to what Jesus told him. He looked him in the eye and said, because I'm the only one who knows the way out. And I just want to encourage you. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into or what you're dealing with right now currently in your life. This silent Saturday, this holy Saturday, this resurrection weekend. I do know this. Jesus is still the only one who knows the way out. He parted the Red Sea. He was the fourth man in the fire. Whatever it is you're facing or you're going through and you feel all alone, don't confuse God's silence for his absence. Jesus is still alive today. And he's a very present help in time of need. The question is, do you know him? You see, tomorrow the empty tomb speaks a promise to every tear that one day soon you will be wiped away. Tomorrow the empty tomb speaks a promise to every pain. One day soon you will be healed. Tomorrow the empty tomb speaks a promise to every piece of wreckage. One day soon you will be made whole. And the empty tomb speaks a promise to the enemy. One day soon you death will die. Over 2,000 years later, in 2024, on the weekend word on channel six, we're still preaching Jesus is alive, Jesus is alive, and Jesus is alive. We have a risen Savior. He's alive. Nothing is impossible for our God, and there is hope for every circumstance, situation, and relationship. Whatever it is you're facing or going through, there is hope. So as we celebrate one year of the weekend word, may this be a day you never forget, a day where you receive Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. If you've never received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, would you pray this prayer with me? It's a prayer of confession. Just say these words. Say, Dear Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Save my soul. Change my life. I believe that you are God. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I repent and I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time, we are celebrating you today on our one year anniversary. Congratulations. Would you go to my website? Let me know that you prayed that prayer so we can get you the resources you need. I got some big news. I wanna share it with you first because you are my family. 
a few years ago, I was hearing all these conversations about people who had church hurt. They have been hurt by a church or a pastor. They have faced some kind of trauma in the church and they no longer attend the church. And it broke my heart because when we go through things in our lives, we shouldn't run from God but run to God. And the truth is it may have been a church that hurt you, but it wasn't the church, the capital C church. And it may have been a pastor that hurt you, but it wasn't the pastor that hurt you. And I started thinking about the bad experiences we have at restaurants and how we've all gone out to eat here in New Orleans. We love going out to eat and I'm sure you've had a bad experience at a restaurant. But just because you had one bad experience at that restaurant didn't mean you stopped going out to eat. You may have not returned back to that place, but you found another place. And I felt like God showed me we give more respect to restaurants than we do the church. Because we didn't stop going out to eat, we just found another one. And I just want to encourage somebody who's watching me right now. If you've ever experienced church hurt and you've been running from the church, and running from God. I wanna encourage you to run to God. There's a family for you. And so, as I was praying for that, and as I was praying for you, and thinking about all those people who had church hurt, God gave me a book. And the title of the book is Church Trauma. It's when hurt happens most, where we expect it the least, the church. It's when you go to a church because you thought you would be safe there and you face some hurt and trauma there. And as a result, the enemy has been messing with you to run from God instead of to God. And so this book is coming out this year, but you can order it now at my website right here. Please pause the TV, pause your phone, go to this link right now, scan it and pre-order your book, Church trauma. It will bless you. It will help you. It will bring healing to your life. Buy one for you. Buy one for a family member or a friend and help share it with others. Thank you so much for being a part of this dream come true.